Start video. Let's see. Ooh, there you are. Here we are. Hi. Yeah, sorry about that delay here, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, did you want to start it the way that you typically do, or or do you want to like me to introduce you to uh, things and, you know, the events here? Uh, whichever that work for you. I mean, this is your podcast, so whatever that okay, works yeah. um, well for you. Well, yeah, I mean, like, um, I guess I can introduce this podcast, like in the, the inaugural episode one. I mm -hmm. uh, wanted to talk today to Bridget Tan. Uh, Dr. Bridget is so inspirational to me because I feel personally that like I'm trying to make transformative change in this world. And it's so nice to see optimistic messages, rational thinking, like all the different elements of like success, like tied into like one person's initiative. So yeah, I mean, there's initiatives to discuss that I'm doing, but I want to make it all about like what Dr. Tan is doing because I think it's worth advocating for, worth advertising, worth celebrating for sure. So yeah, I mean, if you want to introduce yourself a bit, like to get to know you, like I'm happy to, yeah, listen and, and inspire, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Timothy. It's such an honor for me to be able to, to share with you today and to be on your inaugural podcast. Um, and so, yeah, um, as you said, uh, I am a doctor. Uh, I am actually a board certified veterinarian oncologist. There is such a thing. A lot of people say, what? There is a veterinarian oncologist? Yes. Uh, we have board certified veterinarian medical oncologists, actually. So I don't do radiation or surgery, just med uh, the medicine part of cancer for pets. Uh, and I'm also um, actually, uh, the, um, we met through LinkedIn uh, through my work as a uh, grief uh, specialist and life success uh, uh, co uh, speaker, author, and coach. Uh, that is something that I do extensively as well uh, um, in uh, what I, uh, I call grief transformations. Um, and my specialty is in helping people thrive through adversities, through tough times, not after the adversities, but thrive through the tough times while we're having challenge and, and win and get through that and, and create an even better result and doing everything with more ease and fun. So, so that's what I, I do and that's who I am. Yeah, I mean, like for me to see the transition and, you know, continuation of this career in like veterinary oncology. And like I grew up with my mother, very interested in animals. She became a registered nurse, but she was always inspired to say, well, if only I had just, she always wished she had become a vet because she thought, oh, her connection with animals was like one of the most precious things to her. Mm -hmm. She instilled that in me. And I just, I like to hear about how there's a transition from, oh, you're dealing with a time where I know I had, I had a cat who had cancer myself. Mm -hmm. It was real hard to see him go through that and the struggle with it and like the different medicines we tried and, and you know, he fought a good fight and we gave him a lot of good years. Yeah. But um, to see what you do with transforming grief into joy, I think that message is like the message to, to send to people, especially these days. But we always have like fundamentally, like underpinning all of our structure. We say, oh, massive changes in this world, it can cause a lot of grief. You know, like I've dealt with grief. I'm sure you've dealt with loss in your life. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing to see really because, you know, you have like, oh, circumstances in your life. You're like, oh, like the worst moments. Like I remember, you know, talking about oncology, like mm -hmm. my mother, you know, she got sick and she passed. Oh, it's hard to see her go through it. And she had to go yeah. through chemo and yeah. she was fighting through that. And it was like in those moments, I felt like deep, deep, like it was the worst moments of my life to see her mm -hmm. go through yeah. that and die yeah. from it. And like, and then like, I know in my heart, like now, and this is something I had to overcome and understand for my own self, yeah. like for my, my own process of grieving, for my own process of like moving on and actually being happy about my mom after that happened to her. Like what helped me was to understand that like fundamentally who I am as a person, like I'm her, I'm the continuation of her. Uh -huh. So she's always with me. And like, when you lose somebody like that, when you lose a precious member of your life and like Taco, I love that cat. We rescued him off the streets. We gave him seven years of delight. He was never seen a more grateful cat in my life. The eyes, he would look up at you with pride. We worked through him, we'll get him the message he needed. He was having a real tough time of it. He got all the weight loss. You've probably seen that in cats before wow. where they get a bit of revenant, yeah. they get yeah. a bit ghostly, they get thin and thin. And like, he really, till the end expressing his love to us and and it's like i can think back on taco even though it had a sad ending because you know all the wonderful years you give him the treats the spoiling the cuddles the attention the play all of that tough all of that time 
you know, it makes, uh, you know, makes a person feel better about thinking back yeah. on those memories of like, yeah. saying, I lost this precious thing to me that I love, but in the end, it makes me feel better to remember it, to think of it that way. I mean, like, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is a fantastic video you have. And it's a video on saying, well, when you try to make a manifest happen, when you try to make something happen out of nothing or out of your dreams and wishes and desires, your passions, and if it doesn't happen the way you want it to, because I'm coming off of like, you could argue it's like a bit of a victory lap. We finally sold the company. We got it to a state where we could sell it. But we were coming from a place where, you know, the big players, Amazon, Walmart, Avery, they, they took the, the organic listings. Uh -huh. So the company, you know, didn't do too well. And so it's like, thank God we sold it when we did. But in the end of it, you can look back on that and go, we tried as hard as we could. But in the end, just as you were saying in that video, it's like when things don't work out the way you want them to, of course, we wanted it to become like as big as Amazon. But when you're competing with Amazon, sometimes you just can't win. Yeah. And in those circumstances, it's like, you know, I have to look on the bright side to look for the silver lining like you do. It's, you know, it's the best strategy for sure. It's just great to see a person highlight the best strategies and the most like optimistic outcomes for people. And I just feel like in this time where there's lots of people that are dealing with change they really didn't want. Yeah. It's yeah. good to think that way for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, that, that is definitely very, uh, very true, um, you know. And so it, it is something that, you know, it, it's a lot of it is actually mental attitude. And, um, and back to a couple, you know what, actually, I'm going to, um, do you mind if I close my window? I just realized that the uh, gardener is outside and I don't, can, no, you, yeah. can you hear the noise, actually? I can't hear any noise at all. Yeah, it's pretty silent. Oh, okay, that's good then. Then don't, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't. I don't, I wasn't sure if um how how loud is the uh, uh, leaf blowers. But um, so yeah, it, it's ex exactly um you know like you say um. When uh, sometimes you know a couple things with with that. If we are going through the tough times at the moment, which a lot of people um you know nowadays at this moment we going through COVID nineteen is like. I, I'm, I don't know a single person whose life not affected by COVID-19. It's everywhere yeah. in the world. And when, that's kind, when this kind of thing happens, where it's like, it's definitely not in anybody's plan, as I know. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, and it, but things just happen. Then there, there is a couple things that we can do to be able to stay joyful. Well, there are, there are actually quite a few of uh, different things that we can do to be able to continue to thrive through them. And, uh, and that's why uh, uh, quite a few different, that's why I wrote the book, um, Seeking Peace here. Um, and so I'm going to just scratch the surface of it because otherwise we'll be talking here for about four hours or, um, or longer. Um, but you know, the, the, um, the first thing is to, um, to allow, you know, just like it, it, whether it is your, uh, your, um, your career has been turned upside down because of COVID, because a significant family member ill, whether it's from COVID or something else, is like you mentioned, it, the first thing is to allow the, um, your feeling to realize that whatever it is that you are feeling is actually normal. A lot of time what happens is when we are going through something and we don't feel quite right because things are not quite right, then we trying to make everything perfectly normal, which is just not how it is. Um, you know, the, uh, that's where um, Viktor Frankl says that abnormal behavior in an abnormal circumstance is normal behavior. Um, abnormal behavior, if we are acting react, uh, in a certain way, um, abnormal reactions to an abnormal circumstance make it normal and so to realize that if you suddenly feel like um you know you ha you can uh you you just suddenly don't have a lot of energy uh, um when something happening instead of pushing ourselves and making it wrong then just the first things is to allow to allow and and to kind of, uh, to accept what's going on and to allow and once we're able to do that then it's 
just kind of bring a lot more ease to ourselves already. Because if we're fighting ourselves, that's like the worst thing that you can be doing. Uh, when things are already changing and turning upside down in our, in our life otherwise. And so to allow yourself to be you. And everybody different. For, a, for some people, they receive bad news and they navigate it in a certain way. For me, for instance, when I receive um, something really unpleasant, let's say somebody I love passed away, my best friend suddenly passed away the week before Christmas, this past Christmas. When things like that happen, what I do for me, and everybody different, for me is I just take anywhere between one to three days, depend on what my heart calls, and I just sit there and cry. <laughs> And yeah. I'm not kidding. I just sit there and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And, and, and crying is not a bad thing. Crying is not a sign of weakness. Um, if you, uh, I, I actually uh, do, um, discuss it a, a bit more in Seeking Peace, the book. Um, it's that, you know, the body actually designed in such a way that it can recognize that we need, that when we need to cry. And even our tears um, that come from crying are different than the regular reflex tears that we have. So crying is actually a good thing. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to scream. There are studies showing that there is physiologic, physiologic and biologic benefit of screaming. <laughs> as well as crying. Now, don't scare your neighbor or your, uh, you know, your family member. Tell them I'm going to scream or, you know, go somewhere, but you can go to your car. That's where, when I, uh, when I need to scream, I just drive up somewhere, close all the, make sure I close all the window of the car, and then I just scream on top of my lungs. And so, so allow yourself to be yourself and do whatever it is that your, your intuition, like you said earlier, you know, I combine intuition and logic and science. Law, um, intuition tells you to do. Um, and and then the um, one thing that uh, you, um, you we, when we just speaking just now um, a little bit ago, you mentioned that uh, dance away sadness that I did, and I'm glad that it uh, it help of uh, you know it, uh, <laughs> helps the stress of your family member immediately. Just looking at that one sample video, yeah. You were but, doing um, those half pumps. That was perfect. It, <laughs> it relieves tension. I do that naturally. Yeah. Again, in, intuition and everything. I do that. Just I do that every day. That calf pump. Yeah, it does yep. relieve stress. It just and it's good to keep limber. Exactly, exactly. And so, but you know, it's called it's your intuition. Dance away sadness was born in my bedroom when I went through tough times. That's how I moved from being a veterinarian oncologist um, to also be uh, be helping people with grief transformations. Is because I went through um, multitude of events. Back in 2011, um, started with seemingly to me out of the blue divorce, and then that's immediately followed by a Pandora box of, um, of like nine different grievous events in two years. And at the end of that, I wish I could die. I, I really wish I could die, but I, I was in so much pain. But I didn't die. And after a little time, I re I said, well, you know, if I had to stay alive. If I had to stay alive, then I'm going to thrive, not just survive. And I'm to going to somehow, some way, don't know how, thrive with and doing that with ease and fun because this is I'm done with this suffering. And um, and that's when I started my own journey into um, grief recovery and personal development. And fast forward just a couple years later, I look back and realize that I had gone from broke, heartbroken sick all the time, miserable all the time, to live, living a wonderful life with peace of mind, with joy, with ease, with abundance, um, more than better effort, and, it, and also very importantly, with great health, with a better health than I was the first 40 years. And I was like, wow. And so I realized that, you know, there is certain skills and tools that is definitely everybody can learn to recover quickly from their um, tough times, from our tough times, regardless of the cost, because it's multiple different 
grief is event with me. It's a divorce, it's death of loved one, it's um, a, a, a cancer diagnosis, it's some uh, family uh, mem a relationship of breaking down, finance, everything. And everything turned around and just um, when once we apply these tools and skills that, um, that I share in, in, like you said, my video, my YouTube videos, as well as in the book here. And so that's, um, but also during those times, let's talking about back to intuition that we just talked, just now, during this time, something tell me and 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 notice I don't I'm not a dancer. I, I was not a dancer. I actually um I think I wanted to dance when I was like really young, like some in in you know, like eighth grade, if I remember correctly, or maybe actually in fifth grade. Um, and then I was told that I was a stiff, clumsy, ugly duckling who should never dance. And naturally, I being a, a child, being a little girl, I stopped dancing completely. And during that tough time, during um, when I started my journey into the dark passage, so to say, something in me, my it just intuitively told me to start moving to the music. Uh, um, you know, I couldn't even tell my dance to myself to dance because my um, my old belief of me, the ugly duckling who should never dance, wouldn't let me dance. So I just like intuitively said. Just start moving to the music, start moving to the music. And I did. I listened to a whole lot of Enya back then and nice. in my bedroom. And I just moved and then it started to, each time it helped me to feel a little better and feel a little better. And, um, and soon, every time something happened, I went, I went back to the music. And over time, um, as you see already, I realized that it's actually the music along with dancing um, and actually in, in, um, uh, later on with coaching is actually very powerful in helping us release the part of grief that words cannot touch because sometimes we can speak it, but you know, our brain has different compartment and there is a part of grief that words cannot touch. And I think that part of the reasons for that is, um, I don't know if you heard the name Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's quite a... Mm -hmm. I'll check it out. I always take tips whenever I can get them for sure. I always like to look out yeah, and yeah. out new ideas. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, look him up. He's a, he's a very great guy. He um, he started out as a chiropractor, actually. <laughs> Interestingly enough, right? We all um, started somewhere. He started off as a chiropractor, and then he himself got hurt, and he started to learn this brain, uh, th this science here. And um, and and um, what Dr. Uh, and so he uses a lot of science as well, just like you know me being a uh, um, a doctor with my background. But what Dr. Joe Dispenza discovered is this interesting thing where when we read something, say you read a book, or when you hear something, let's say you just, you know, listen to somebody talking or something like that, those get into our mind, okay? Now, if we experience something, whether it is a wonderful experience, say we're getting married, or, you know, somebody celebrating our promotion or whatever, new baby, something like that, or a negative experience, which is grief, whether it is a divorce, somebody passed away, um, you mentioned your, um, your cat and your mom, and then, um, you know, whatever the experience, when it's an experience, it's actually go beyond the mind. It gets to us on the cellular level. And so when it gets to us on the cells, it sits there and uh, it's stuck in there a whole lot more. And talking and writing and things like that get the things in our mind and allow us to release that. But sometimes, and as I actually do more and more dance away sadness, I find that it's actually very powerful in helping people release the, their current grief, but also actually in helping people release grief that they have from, you know, whatever the, the trauma they have in their childhood. People that has like 30, 40, 20, 50 years of these things that still haunting them, that get to them in the cellular level. And as we know, it actually makes sense because if you ever hear, uh, listen to music, it has its own vibration. And we know that we're all vibrating, we're all cells, we're all vibrating in a different way, um, it cells. And so music has its own vibration. And when you're dancing and when you're moving, it has, uh, you know, it, it moves your cells as well. And when you combine the two, music and the movement, and then alongside with Dance Away Sadness is actually with coaching by me as well, 
then it's really allow the cells, our cells that's harboring this grief, but what the, the, doesn't matter how long it is, to kind of move in a different way and then let it go, you know, let it all the stuff that need to go, go away. And then, um, and, and so I think that's also, um, you know, but intuitively, intuitively, I started doing that. And thankfully, it seems to help. And it sounds like it, uh, it's, you know, it clicks with um, your family member as well to help her um, um, move in that way. But so that's the first thing. And, and so, and, and, you know, not everybody dancing. And then even with dance away sadness, some people who heard about dance away sadness says, okay, let's tell the audience three songs that we must listen to. And I said, no, I will never do that because everybody, different back to allowing to back to allowing you want to allow what feels good for you um what you know um what feels good to one person the three songs and uh, might be something that somebody else said ah, i will never listen to this thing so so allow yeah, yeah. yourself you know to, to be whatever yeah exactly everyone different um, so you know a lot the first thing is to um to just allow ourselves um to be uh to to, to just let things um, B. Yeah. And then the other thing that also helpful is to remember, um, you know, when we are going through tough, tough times, when we're going through adversities, sometimes it can be um, challenging uh, to even think about you know the the better outcome. It it people people say, oh, you know, ha, um, a lot of people say, oh, well, think about what you would love as as the outcome, and that's definitely a wonderful idea. And I do give um that advice as well. But having been through it myself, I I must say that sometimes you cannot think when you are in the depth of thing. You cannot even think of like how i want things to be two years or five years or whatever That's years true. from now Very true. you know I, I, it's just like take one baby step how, how would i want this today to be how would i want um you know what is it that you really you really want um want right now and just focus on the moment instead of trying to look too far in the future because at times when it depend on where we are in life if we are um we're in a good enough space where we can say yeah i want this in two years i want this in five years great but if we could be, we could not even and this has happened to me before where i could not even get myself from under the cover i couldn't even get myself out of bed and at the same time i know that i, I got to I, got, I have bills to pay <laughs> i got to go to work and so i'm um, like Okay, the only thing I want is right now to be able to get myself out of bed and, and somehow make it to where I need to be. And so take just baby steps. We know that baby steps takes us up to Mount Everest. You know, even if you have to crawl, actually nobody get up at Mount Everest. If we think about it, nobody get up there by just taking one huge big leap, right? And so, so take baby steps. Even if you crawl, if you see those mountain climber, I don't climb mountain, but from sometimes I watch them. They're like, they're basically crawling up the mountain. So, yeah. so even if you have to crawl, take one baby steps, crawl a little bit. And then, of course, um, do what you can with what you are. Like you said, uh, you know, you want to, um, uh, what, uh, your business to be like Amazon. But at least you, you, um, yeah. you recognize thing and say, this is something I can do right now instead of become a total loss. And so, so that's yeah. the other thing, um, you know, and, and maintain... Um, I would say, you know, to, to keep in mind that uh, the fact that it, it is, it's just a fact, we don't see rainbow, we don't see rainbow, if we don't have a uh, rain or storm ahead of time, right? Um, we don't, we don't at all see rainbow. Um, and, and so just to remember that, but also not only that, not only that, now we can, we can think that uh, at the same time, but if we are going through the storm, if we are the one going through the storm, there are two important things. First, if you are going through the storm, it, it's very helpful to allow help because when, um, when we're going through storm and it's almost like if you are out in the field and it's having a lot of thunderstorm and you don't go find a shelter, ask somebody for a shelter, you might get hit by lightning <laughs> and, and tired. Um, so, you know, and so allow support, allow support, allow help, ask for support, not just allow, but actually ask because a lot of people, and I discover this a lot of with my client as well as with myself, people don't know we need help. That's one. 
And then the second thing is sometimes people think we might need help, but they are, um, yeah, they, 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 they don't want to, to intrude us. If we don't ask um, for help, sometimes people's like, well, you know, I might, be, um, I might offend this person if I'm offering help and she didn't ask or he didn't ask for it. And so ask for help um, is one when you, we are going through the thunderstorm, so to say. And then to remember that not only that, but you know, the rainbows up there, if you ask for help and you go hiding and you cover up like that and we never look up, we will never see the rainbow. So if we're going through the thunderstorm right now, whatever the cause, whether it is COVID, whether it is something else is in our life, we want to allow, um, allow and ask for help as well as to remember to look up from time to time, particularly as the storms are um, starting to pass because otherwise we'll never see the rainbow. So, so those are a few tips I can keep talking, but you know, I just want to see what, uh, what's your feedback with that. Well, it's fantastic to see because what I want to do with this channel definitely is celebrate the perspectives and insights of people like you. Fantastic. I mean, you know, one of the things I want to do is like have it where the ideas are up front like this and like a back and forth too is, is important too. And all the time you're talking, I'm listening and I'm like, okay, I have some ideas directly related to your ideas. And I've been thinking about this for a while and I'm like, I want to do a little bit back and forth and kind of directly respond to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you can definitely go, it's, it's fun to do a back and forth for sure. So I figured like one of the first things I was thinking of when you were talking is when you have a situation where you don't want it to like to be the way it is, but you just have to like where I was, uh, I was in Westchester County for like 20, 22 years, 23 years. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there, you know, from there from when I was 12, 12 and, and, you know, like, I, I enjoyed Peekskill, New York so much. It's my community. It's like, you know, my lifeblood to be growing up around these trees and all this stuff. And before I left Peekskill, there was something that happened that was dreadful. What happened was they took the jackhammers and these constructions and they tore up the streets right in front of my house. I was blessed in some ways. I walked right across from my building over here. This is my commute. The building next door, walk across the street, walk up three flights, five minute commute by foot hoofing it all the way, the thing of it was, the jackhammers tearing up the streets made the building shake. They were clattering these big pl metal plates down. All the trees I grew up with for 20 years, they tore out of the streets. Oh. I grew up with these trees from a little lad, yeah. walking yeah. around, breathing the air they did, mm -hmm. all this stuff. It hurt my heart to see these trees torn out of this community. It hurt my heart. Yeah. And all this incessant jackhammering, and I had to walk across a plank to get into my home. I was like Jack Sparrow. The planks were bowing as I'm walking across them. I'm a bigger guy. And the thing of it is, like, I had to deal with this for like three solid months as I'm working. And you know what? You know what? It drove me towards listening to audiobooks. It drove me towards listening to podcasts. It drove me towards introspection and self reflection. And it gave me an inner serenity to be around all this chaos. It was like a war zone. I mean, I don't want to diminish the effects of war zones. It's dreadful. I've never experienced anything like it. But in my sheltered life, my sheltered, privileged life, this was, right. you know, death yeah. of my mother, you know, horrible, the death of my pets, oh my God. Yeah. But this was like an invasion of my community for three solid months. Mm -hmm. And they were right in them, they tore up everything, everything, everything. And so they were, they were taking their time too. And so here's the thing of it. So I could have seen this as something that was like an adversity that I was like, I have to get out of this community right now. But I stuck with it. And then, you know, for there for another year and a half, saw the streets renewed. It was beautiful to see the streets renewed. One thing I wasn't a big fan of, when they put down the new trees, they stuck the roots in cement. I don't like to do that to trees. So what happened was, I talked to the mother-in-law about this, the, the building was also falling apart. We were dealing with kitchen and bathroom renovations that were overdue. So with, with dealing with a, like a recalcitrant landlord that didn't want to do anything with that, I could have said, oh, I could cost on my own. I decided to move. I tried to be there. Sarah's parents, we decided to move. And it turned out that as much as it hurt me to move, I had to get rid of many heirloom furniture. It hurt a lot because we could only bring so much. Okay. So it was a lot of things I had to sacrifice. The worst thing was the furniture. It's no big deal. It's the community that's around you. Mm -hmm. It's the neighbors that become like siblings and, yeah. you know, like yeah. a second parent to you. And you have to leave them behind and it hurts your heart. And then it's like you have to leave for your wife and be able to be their parents so she can she can overcome her challenges too, health and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so forth, you know. And one of the things with it is when we moved and it hurt to move, it felt like tearing the roots out from, from where I grew up. And to be here 
and to adjust this whole new community. And this happened like year, year, better part, more than a year ago to be here in Fort Collins, Colorado, a whole new city. Yeah. And my mother-in-law chose it. And she chose wonderfully where we are, beautiful old trees. The trees are all 40 plus, kicking out beautiful air. We came here in the spring, all the blossoms were in the air. It was a reward for that sacrifice. And then ultimately I just feel like without this change, I mean, I came into a community with no friends and community around me. Yeah. So yeah. what I had to do is, it was a lot of a lot of self respect, a, a lot of self reflection, and a lot of learning, and a lot of you know, I was already living very very isolated, very very homebody life with my wife. I don't need much to enjoy myself. I was already living that life before this all hit me. Uh -huh. So when this hit me, you know, I was already taking a victory lap from World Label. Really, I don't really need to hustle around. So what I did was I thought I was already thinking this way to, to launch this podcast, to share the best ideas of the world, give it for free and send it for free. And, and I'm, I, I, you know, your channel is a celebration of that. I want my channel to be a celebration of that too, where you're advocating for the best of your ideas. You're bringing it to the world. You're sharing it for free. What people can give back if they're struggling, if they can't give anything, you know, enjoy it for free. This is what it yeah, should be. Yeah, yeah. I use the library system. I've read, you know, 300 books in the last mm -hmm. two years over the library system. It's yeah. fantastic. It's a great resource. It's publicly freely available. And it's like that spirit of, you know, of sharing freely information is something yeah. that I almost feel like it's sacred to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I don't know if you've ever heard of like Kapamism, where mm -hmm. it's basically this religion and it's all about free sharing of information. That's the most sacred thing. And so I feel like, you know, all the world's faiths, all the beliefs that exist, mm -hmm. they're all so, you know, most of them, you know, there's other ones, you know, get a little bit weird, but for the most part, all ideas are really phenomenal. So it's like to be able to have free access and sharing to those informations, I just feel is like the most important thing. So I'm glad we're both movies towards that. You've been doing it for a long, long time. I so appreciate all the resources you share. It's That's always an inspiration to me. One of the things I want to talk about a little bit was another thing you were mentioning. And the other thing you were mentioning that like kind of inspired me was when you're talking about the book you wrote and, and some of the, the, the videos you shared that kind of like link into those ideas. Um, one of the things that's more, more like I want to focus on with this is, is where you're taking something that's like truly tragic in this world. And you, how, how can you spin strong to gold? It's something that I've, you know, and it's almost like sometimes it can feel like in this world where, in this world where it's like, it seems like impossible just to survive. It can be like for, for great people, for exceptional people, it can be an incredible struggle. And it's like, wow, you know, like almost like if, if, if the ordinary is like beyond your limits, you know, and you can only do the impossible to strive towards the impossible, the, yeah. the improbable can be the thing to do. Cause you might want to just do that. You might just go, oh, well, you know, I could try to do the conventional route, but, but, but then this unconventional approach could be so much more satisfying for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. So like, I just feel like that's so great to see, you know, you, you know, all of the stuff, you know, one of the things you talk about was, was making, making meaning out of suffering. So if you had suffering in your life, if you had like a trouble and a trauma and something that you regret, something that you, you hurt your heart, that, that you should be able to, to, to take that and go, I'm going to make this mean something. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I do in life is, is taking seemingly the random, the coincidental and trying to find the meaning in it. And I've done that for a long time. And it took me a long time to kind of like put it into words, try to express myself with it. But one of the things I'll say on the subject is when you have this situation happen where you have like the, the meaning of the situation and it's, it seems senseless, it seems random. It can, it can be the best thing that can happen for you for sure. It can be like the outcome that is like, wow, I didn't even see this coming. But if I was patient, if I was diligent, yeah. I'm seeing an opportunity. You talked about crisis and opportunity before too. Yeah. And it's like a lot of this can feel like and the world is ending. And it yeah. just, it does seem like that. It seems like, oh man, like everything is so negative in this world. When you turn on the news, there's a stream, stream of negativity. And I just feel like to have positivity first mm -hmm. and to have strategies yeah. where one, one of the things I'll say, one, one last thing I'll, before you, I'll let you continue on with mm -hmm. your back and forth here, is, yeah. is one of the keys that I wanted to bring to this that, 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 that unlocked some of, like, that worked with your ideas, growth synergy, is like, I felt a lot of regret in my life. And mm -hmm. there's been things that I've regretted that, that in retrospect, with more and more time to think about, there was no reason for me to regret them at all, because ultimately, the decisions weren't in my hands. 
And if, when, when the decisions are in the hands of others or in the hands of nobody, and it just turns out in a way that you don't expect, yeah. how can you regret something that wasn't really your choice to begin with? Exactly. And so a lot of people are carrying around all this regret that's weighing them down. And it's like, there's no reason for most of this regret. There's no reason for most of this shame. Yeah. And like, one of the things that's interesting is the dynamic between shame and pride. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, you know, George Carlin influenced me deeply when he was saying, well, if you're born Irish, <laughs> you know, like you were born Irish. What, what, why are you proud of something that you didn't even choose? I like to be proud of things I earn, like things I strive towards, things that, that work out for me. Despite adversity, you go, holy crap, it worked out. Excuse my French. Mm -hmm. But the, the truth of it is, it's just great. It's great to think that way. Because then if you, if you put that on yourself to say, oh, I'm not going to feel regret for things that weren't my decision, mm -hmm. it makes you have much more relief in life. It makes you have more energy to focus on the things you can change. My mother always taught me. It's almost like the serenity prayer. If you can do something about something, do something about it and yeah. don't worry. If you mm -hmm. can't do anything about it, don't worry. It's just Absolutely. the best strategy for And it's, there's yeah. worry, there's, just as you had, there's a fantastic video you had on fear. And fear is one of those things to me. It's like, I've been living without. I've been living without fear. What I do with fear is I do it with sadness too. And I do it with anger and frustration too. It's an heirloom I inherited from my ancestors. I wrap it lovingly in cloth and I put it in my cabinet over here. And when I want to cry, when I want to feel sad, I'll take out sadness and unwrap, cry with them, cry for my mother, cry for my grandmother, cry for everything that hurts me. But then after that, I put it away. And, but fear is a motivating factor. Fear is an instigator. It's a fascinating topic to me. But I mean, uh, you know, I would love to hear more about what you have to say as well. I mean, I just wanted to give you some of the ideas that you inspired for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of, of course, you know, um, we can start with fear, actually. Fear is a really, um, you know, fear gets bad reputations, right? People say, it's like, if you hear, uh, you know, on Facebook or, or wherever, of talking about uh, a lot of people, personal development, don't let fear, um, you know, do this to you. Don't, don't have fear. And as the, um, with COVID, like with us, with COVID-19 now, people say, oh, don't be fearful. I mean, it's hard. It's hard right now. It's well, a culture of fear right now. I like to live actually, without fear too much, but it's good to have it, just a taste of it. It's like a spice, like pepper. Well, I like it as a pepper. Fear by itself, fear by itself is actually good. That's what a lot of people bypass. Fear by itself is actually good. It's our survival instinct. You know, if, as men cave, as men cave and women cave back in the back, if you have no fear, then you can, you can easily get hurt. And um, I think you mentioned my video. Um, you know, I shared in that video, I used to have a cat. I, I didn't have the cat, actually. The cat was only a guest, thankfully. But this cat has absolutely no fear of fire. Yeah, that was, I saw that video. That was a good one. Yeah, and, and, and it's like, That's so weird. you would turn on the stove, and I have gas stove. Um, you would turn on stove, you would turn on candle. But the stove, like, we, the stove would be on, and, and you know, and, and the cat would just jump there and, like, try to play bad with the fire. And I was like, I was fearful for the cat. Because that sometimes not fear is a good thing because it's a protective mechanism. What we don't want is we don't want is to have fear or whatever it is. Actually, it's not just fear, but it's any emotions that we have to master us, to, to overwhelm us. So we want to be able to have fear, to have sadness, to have worry. Um, it, it, this is all are just emotions by itself. Now, when it becomes a problem is when you allow those emotions, whether it is fear, whether it is sadness, whether it is concern, so to say, to overpower us. So instead of us having fear, then we, then we fear have us. Instead of having us having a circumstance, whatever the circumstance is, um, then you know we allow circumstance to have us, and that's a completely different story. And circumstance, like you say, the, uh, to the other topic that you mentioned earlier, you know things happen, and sometimes things happen, and then you just like it, it just seemingly to to blow up, and 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 sometimes it seems like coincidence, but sometimes it doesn't. And we never know life. But when things happen, just you, we just try to stay positive. You gave a great example, actually. You know, Napoleon Hill says that every adversity, every adversity, every heartbreak, every failure, 
has the seed of a equal or greater benefit in it. And so naturally, um, talking about when things happen and also with regrets, if we look at that quote, um, and we know Napoleon Hills and all his work, we there is no um there is no need to have regrets. There is also there is no need to say, oh, this is happened, I fail, and so I let's say we have a failure. There is no no um there is no need to say I fail, I regret this, that I regret that. Uh, perhaps it's just it's just something that actually it's happening in a way that we cannot see at this moment but if we keep in mind the positive of what is the lesson in this and then what is the, um, the possible good that can come from this then we can keep moving forward regardless of, of any adversities um, you, um it's it's kind of funny i'm um, talking about regret i uh with my book that um, you, we mentioned earlier with Seeking Peace, the book initially was meant to come out um, in November last year, initially. And one after another, things, things just happen and things just happen. And it keep getting back up and keep getting pushed back and keep getting pushed back. And, and one of them is actually um, me not seeing somebody's email, not seeing one of the editor email that as a result actually back everything out by two months and then something else. And so I could have sat there and said, oh my God, why didn't I see that and all this thing, you know, and, and regretting. But thankfully by now I have learned to just Okay, there is there is a, the, the, the seed of good in every adversity is here, and I, I and at the moment I could not see what the seed of that. I, it it definitely felt that uh, felt like I screwed up. That's all I felt. It felt it felt like a god. I, I screwed up big time. Not 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 seeing this email and then not following up. How could I completely screwed up? It's a very easy thing to fall into. And, and thankfully, I didn't do that. And I just keep going one step forward, one step forward, one step forward. Maybe steps take us to where we need to be. And we never know. Sometimes life works in a funny way. And, it, and the book got pushed back and got pushed back and got pushed back such that it's actually, um, we didn't plan this. We didn't plan this. But we finally said, you know what? We're just going to have the book come up in the middle, um, the, uh, the end of May. And what happened in Star, uh, and Seeking Peace, um, the full title of Seeking Peace here is The Proven Five Finger Method to Thrive Through Change Effortlessly. What happened? Everything changed in the world in March with COVID. And so Seeking Peace come mm. out. Now looking back, it's going to almost give me chill from time to time. Looking back, something up there going on, something going on such that it come up where it's most surfing. And and what's what's the point of regret? Um, you know, there is absolutely no regret. But if we had had something happen, and then we dwell in the regret, um, and then we will never be able to say, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? And we just well, what we do is we endeavor. We endeavor to be the very best we can, to do the very best we can, taking a little step at a time, and knowing that um, at some point, uh, we have a uh, in, in here, there was a story. The book based, uh, uses a lot of stories. Uh, there is a story uh, based on uh, 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 through a, a real person, actually, who um, who cut herself up, who cut herself up every year um, because she had uh, um, conducted an abortion eighteen years back. Now, I'm not um, condemning or uh, approving abortions. I, it's, I'm, I'm just, you know, not, neither one way or the other. But the person came to me after 18 years of grief um, and it, not even realizing that she was having grief. She just feel killed. And, and it's like she's cutting herself every year to punish herself. Can you imagine that? And, um, and, and for, for the regret and looking back and speaking with her, she was like, well, I couldn't see a way out and, and, and all this thing that she lists and what she did at the time was what, with her awareness at the time and a lot of time this is what we do. With our awareness at the moment, um, we did what we feel the very best. It's always easy a year, a month, 10 years later to look back and say, 
well, why did I do that? Why didn't I do this? But just like um, Steve Jobs, the, uh, the founder of Apple, Steve Jobs says, we can always connect the dot looking back. We cannot connect the dot looking forwards. And because of that, with no, knowing that there is no reason for us to have regrets to say, oh God, why didn't I do this? Um, we can always connect the dot looking back, um, but not necess- uh, we cannot connect the dot looking forward. And so if what we're going through things right now, and we say, I, I'm not understanding what happening here. Why, why is this, um, you know, why, why is all this thing happening in life? Why did everything turn upside down? Well, um, it's definitely because we can, sometimes we just cannot connect the dot looking forward. Um, what, um, uh, one, one thing that I experienced, um, some people ask me what drive me to write the, uh, the book Seeking Peace. And what drove me to write, I was already doing grief um, coaching, grief transformation coaching. But actually what happened is talking about we never know things in life, you know, and then taking the lessons like you give example with, um, with your move and, and the experience that you have. When something happened, what is the lesson in this? Uh, with you, you know, when your street was torn up, it's actually the benefit from that is you start doing these self-reflections. Um, you start listening to podcasts, you know, you got to close your ears, or you grow, start listening to podcasts and it start your journey into this and make you a, 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 you know, a much more empowered and, and, and brighter person, even bright, even more empowered, even, uh, even, even more empowered and, and um, aware person. But uh, with me um, last year, this is little, uh, last year, uh, um, uh, about exactly a year and a half ago now, my right hand suddenly became my dominant hand here. My right hand suddenly become paralyzed. Just out of nowhere, out of nowhere, it just suddenly stopped working over two weeks. Wow. And I, I was like, okay, well, this is not, not good at all. And I, I went to multiple specialists. I live in Los, uh, nearby Los Angeles. I went to multiple specialists. I had every imaginable test you can think of from these specialists trying to find out what's the cause. And there was, they couldn't find anything. And therefore, no treatment was available. So in a matter of two weeks or so, I became handicapped with my veterinary work. I practically lose my career, my income. At the same time, at the same time, my mother suddenly become critically ill as well. She lost so much weight. We thought she will not make it. And also at the same time, uh, my... um, my relationship with my um, long-term companion, with my seven years boyfriend, ended just like that. And we, it's very easy to say, why am I going through this? This is sucks, this is awful, and I don't deserve this. And there was, I, I would say, you know, to completely honest, um, I, there was a part of me that keep wanting to go there. Why is this happening? Why is this happening again? I thought I recovered from this and, and so on and so forth. But remembering that every adversity has, um, everything in life has the opportunity to teach us a lesson. Everything and everybody has the opportunity to teach us a lesson. And every adversity, every heartbreak, every failure has the seed of a greater benefit. Uh, then I say, okay, this is sucks. I don't want this, but I'm not going to have this happen for nothing. Life don't put us through tough times, life don't put us through adversities for nothing, but it is up to us to find what's the other thing, the greater thing is. And actually with me, um, part of the one, one of the things that I discovered during going through these uh, adversities in 2019, early 2019 was, yes, I was going through all those just like I did in 2011 and 12. And in, in a way, in, in this particular time, the stakes was a lot bigger. It's not as many events, but the loss is a lot greater. It did, you know, before it was a loss of a marriage, which nobody wants to lose their marriage, but it's not a career that you put 25 years of education and your income and everything all at once. And it wasn't, I was not losing my parents back, back then. And it's like, okay, so that, you know, this is really suck and the stakes a lot greater. But at the same time, I was, I was noticing that I was continuing to 
I was able to continue to have peace of mind, to be at ease, to stay joyful. And regardless of everything that seemingly just one after another, after another again, unlike eight years earlier. And that's when I realized actually that I, not only I have mastered the skill and tools on being able to transform our adversities into something greater and, and better, but also with those skills and tools, I have mastered the, the skills and tools to be able to continue thriving even as we are going through tough times to continue having peace of mind even as we're going through adversities and we know that we all deserve to thrive we all deserve to have peace of mind and so that's a really valuable tip uh, things that, that I find. And so what I did is I ended up, the good um, things out of it is I ended up streamlined. Uh, I simplified because it's a lot of different things. I simplify and streamline them into five key points, each correlate with one of our fingers. And so it's making it easy to remember and easy to apply for everybody because everybody de deserve, you deserve, everyone who listened to this deserve peace of mind and thrive and to thrive regardless of what's going on in life. So, so it's really, it's a long answer and long um, uh, feedback to, to you know, the point that you, you, um, you want me to brought up. But yeah, every, everything that's happened in life, like Steve, Steve Jobs says, we cannot connect the dot looking forward. So don't regret it. Um, if we had done something, look back. And if we have a regret, we can always look back. What I usually share people is says, okay, what lesson do you learn from this? Are you going to do this again? No. If not, then what can you do differently? And then realize that we really had tried the very best with our level of awareness back then um, to really do the best we can and then just know that not to repeat it again. Well, yeah, I mean, I love this topic because it's so easy to misunderstand emotions and to like try to like say, oh, I don't ever want to do anything with this. That's why I was like, it's like an heirloom I inherited where it's like, I'm, you know, fear to me is like not my go-to, right? Definitely not. But it's definitely worth holding on to just to, to come back to it and to use it how it can be used. You know, it's a tool. It's a weird tool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it's worthwhile to try kind of use it on yourself to say, oh, well, how would I feel if this happened? How would I feel if that happens? It's a fantastic motivating factor. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've dealt with a lot is it's like some people in my life are positive. Some people in my life can bring negativity. And when I say, like, I think this is important, where ideas, they come from people. But when you associate them with people, then that can make people feel bad when the idea doesn't work out the correct way. And so when you, when you extract an idea from a person, and you have it there and everyone can discuss it and we can we can have a conversation about it when that occurs then we're not judging the person when we judge the idea and we're not judging the idea when we judge the person and so like we can live without a lot of judgments but you know it's like it's a lot like discrimination where it's like oh if you have discrimination like it's like a pejorative like oh this is discriminatory but you can also be somebody that has discriminating tastes and it's not necessarily wrong to have affinities. Mm -hmm. And so when you have affinities and you follow them, then sometimes you can make a decision. And like, sometimes you have an affinity towards like anxiety or negativity. And when I see that happen to somebody, like I have a conversation with somebody that's near and dear to me, my wife, and sometimes she can bring a negativity in the conversation. And I always try to emphasize, you know, I'm trying to be positive, like negativity right now. Don't want to, don't want to do too much with it. So I was listening to like this Kundalini meditation practice at the time and it inspired me. These power chants inspired me. And I wanted to share a power chant with you that I, that amused everyone involved and, and it was effective most importantly. And it was like a mutuality too. So before I say this, know that she has the same right and privilege that I do. So she's coming into the room with negativity and it's all caused by some letter that caused her some distress it turned out to be a misunderstanding regardless. So I'm like, okay, so what I felt like just inspired in that moment, I wasn't like thinking in my brain, this is what I should do. But I said, I banish your negativity, like radiate and exalt in my positivity. And I like, I repeated that because she kept being negative. And then eventually the negativity went out of the room. And I said, she got a little upset. She got a little upset and she said, Tim, that shouldn't have worked. And I, she said, do I have the right to do that to you? And I said, every time, please banish my negativity. And you know what, didn't come back for the day. It went away and it went away and it left. 
And it's like, you know, it's like almost like, oh, this could offend somebody. It's just, everybody's so easily offended these days. And there's nothing wrong with like saying, okay, there's, there's, you know what the, the I wanted to say? It's just like, sir, people are like, oh, you know, you can't say anything these days, PC culture. And I feel like personally, because I'm a sweethearted person, I can speak with candor. I can speak freely because my heart is telling me I love everyone. So, so it's like the people who have like, you know, contempt for strange groups of people, I'm a little heavier. You might go, oh, gross, you know, but you know, if you think that, you know, if you say it, and it, it won't offend me, but the thing of it is like, you know, the, 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 that's the core of it. The core of it is going, ah, like I have some like, you know, like thing I want to say that's not so pleasant. And if, if this society is preventing me from saying it. And I'm just like, you know what? I think we should all speak freely, but first we should examine our own hearts, try to heal our own hearts, try to heal each other's hearts. And it's like so much of the practice that you do, like even like going back to the, if you do in the veterinarian's office, I had to deal with a cat where, you know, we, we had to put him down. And it's like, you know, that veterinarian, he helped me process that grief. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I know that, you know, like, that's like, that's the focus of like my mom's work too. When she was an RN, she dealt with yeah. like hospital, she, she dealt with all types of care and people in, in critical illness. And then it's like in those situations, I think in those situations of suffering, they reveal a truth to you. And the yeah. truth they reveal is like, oh man, despite and you you learn this and you taught this is that like um the, the the darkest situations can be even even those darkest situations like after my mom died and i was waiting for my 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 wife and my mother-in-law to come and pick me up and i literally i was waiting in this empty parking lot in the rain in the dark and it's alone and um and i when i i was thinking about bringing this up during this conversation i cried about it and it's like one of those things it's going to be cathartic and it's like i think it's important to do your crying over things because and to not be ashamed of it it can be cathartic to cry and cry and it's like that's one of those things it's like sometimes i just weep and i don't know why and it's like one of those things i'm like oh man i'm feeling the world sadness or i'm getting a vibe from somebody and you know sarah says to me tim why do you do this to yourself why do you cry why do you put yourself through this in the mornings other times and I'm like, because if I close myself off to the world's suffering, then I lose the joy of the connection too. And yes. the journey is worth it. The journey is totally worth it. And you can say, oh, going forward, if we can try to minimize people's suffering, I think that's a good thing. You know, it's like some people go, well, suffering builds character. It does build character. It builds us into the amazing people we are today. But that journey our ancestors went through, that journey that we're going through, that had into every life, a little rain must fall, you know, the, the, that journey we're going through, you know, when we're going forward and we're trying to make the world for, for people going forward, we have to try to make it more kind, more gentle, more patient, more generous, because you can say, oh, there's this whole thing, this bugaboo with the student loans. You know, I did online education, very affordable, kind of like did my own thing, but had to do over again. My message would be, I should have just started building things and just go, let my work speak for itself. I'm trying to do that now. The thing of it is, to say, to look at student loans and go, oh, there's this whole thing about student loan forgiveness. And I feel like there's so many people stuck in this mire. And it seems like some people are like, well, listen, I paid my student loans off, right? So why is it that these people should get their student loans kind of like forgiven or, or, or set aside? And my, my, that's, to me, that seems like, well, my mom went through cancer. So why should these people get chemotherapy? And it's like, yeah, I mean, there are people that suffered and died. Yeah, we can't save them now. In retrospect, we can't do it. But why can't we make it better for people going forward? Just in general, I can see that you're trying to encourage a kinder world, a more patient world. That's what I'm trying to do too. Mm -hmm. And everybody deserves to live a great life. I do believe that. And like one of the things I'm going to try to do with this channel is that essential positivity, that essential like strategies towards making a better world happen, advocate towards those. I'm like, we haven't really talked about this at all. But like, this is going to be directly tied to a website. And the website is basically centrally an advocacy group. And it's called Delphic.group. It's not .com. And there are going to be links to different projects going on, a piece of software that helps people vote, a piece of device that helps to try to, you know, like, what do we do with gun control? This is the solution. So working towards these issues and saying like, oh, there are conversations that are happening right now where there's like the left and the right and there's this paradigm and these conversations left and right and, and it's not getting anywhere. And it's because it's been set up to just be like Pong and just the ideas are gonna go back and forth and uh -huh, go nowhere, uh -huh. except if people bring new ideas, new 
Well, that's one of the things we're trying to do. And I know like the, the videos on Kaizen you did, and I'm like, I'm excited about more of the stuff you do with like business strategy and I'm gonna be following you and, and learning from you going forward. And it's like, like to, to think about business strategy and like go, oh, I was educated in business. And like, you talk about your mentor and it's so cool. And I was like, I want to talk about my mentor a little bit, if it's okay. My friend Vincent, and he's like, I was going through, I finished my MBA. You know, we, we were about to like, you know, he was making moves behind the scenes to get the best price and you know, everything like that. And like, he's saying, well, you know, Tim, you know, it's, it's gotta be about making money. You have to be about making money. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I studied my MBA and everything. Clayton Christensen, you know, competing against luck, you know, the innovator's dilemma, those books and all the elite business education in the world, yeah. You know, there's capital that just floats around that just you can make out of thin air. But the trick of it is, it's not about that for those people working on that level. It's about changing the world. And so it's like, that's the education we're giving our business leaders. So what are they going to go and do? They're going to go and change the world. That's what they should do. That's what I'm trying to be part of the, the push towards the vanguard towards the most innovative ideas. And kind of like I was talking to somebody else about this, Paul Graham over at Y Combinator, who does like Hacker News and I follow Hacker News a lot. It's a great news source and it's just like the most inspirational ideas. Reddit's cool too, but Hacker News is kind of an elite group where the best ideas float to the surface more and the people that have the pull and manipulate where things go, they have really good taste. And the conversations there in the comments are unbelievable. I was telling PG about this and he was saying, but I'm like, okay, we're doing this startup school thing. And I'm like, okay, so what my plan is is like I could do Q-tips or I could do Vaseline. It doesn't exist now. It will soon like that. The trick of it is, it's also good to do this and bring in the planes. And so, you know, project phaser, you know, yeah. how can, how could the policy move in with the new market category and how can these packs be pulled together in ways that are novel and exciting and most importantly, desirable for the companies that hold most of these patents so bringing yeah. it all together like bluetooth you know how like bluetooth mm -hmm. doesn't exist yeah. until these companies like sony and all these other companies decide we want this new device we want this new market carrier where we want this new method for conveying audio through this through the air so like i mean i i kind of said my piece on delphi group right now and it's like this is going to be on the you know there's going to be links to this on the delphi group website there's going to be a synergy between this youtube channel and different things so I, I wanted to, you know, give an idea to the audience. It's like, right. well, what am I doing? Why am I here? What am I talking about this? Yeah. It's all tying into that for sure. That's but wonderful. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to talk a bit about business or anything like that, or anything at all, whatever you're inspired to, I'm, I'm happy to kind of riff off of you and see, see where you want to head in the direction with which of points. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I mean, the, you know, at the, well, if, we can talk about business. It's probably good for our different sessions and, um, you know, oh, so yeah. we can talk more about that. But, in general, you know, one thing that I, I always say is um, because I, I cor train corporates as well. And it's like, yes, there is a corporation, but corporations made of people. And so if you cannot have the people thrive, the corporate's not going to thrive either. It's like a That's community. Right. Yeah, you gotta make it desirable. It's okay. a, co a corporation, it's a community. It, it's everybody's there. And yeah, people will work because they have to work, but people will leave their job and we, we know the cost um, of replacing somebody. And so the best things that to do is, the best thing we can do for ourselves and for our workplace and the best thing that the workplace can do for itself and then for us is to make sure that everybody thrive because otherwise if somebody is really unhappy, you know, negative culture and things like that, that's what drive people away. And, um, and then the cost of that, the cost to the, of that to the corporations, um, that's why grief costs the workplace 117 billion dollar every year every yeah. year and that's and that's right. because we get a lot well, of time we, we forgot yeah we forgot about it and so um if we want to be able to recognize that and and so yeah i'm very happy to um actually share about uh, more about workplace and things like that if you if, uh, want to even on a different time um so we can talk more that'd be more fantastic more. yeah, yeah. well yeah. it'd be wonderful well you know yeah. what i always say it, it's so great that you brought up productivity because productivity is so hard to quantify it's so hard to qualify what is productivity how can you improve it where do you measure it what if it doesn't get measured then it doesn't get talked about. And so one of the things is, like when I think about productivity, I think about corruption. Mm -hmm. To me, productivity and corruption are like that. 
And one of the things I kind of coined, I like to say, only in writing really up until this point, is that productivity and corruption are mutually disinclined. Right. And it's a bit of an Adam Smithism, but it's, it's totally true. The more corruption you see in your society, the more, the more dragging your heels you're going to see by the people that you're putting to the grindstone. Right. And right. what happens is, like, you know, it's like, how do you fight corruption? It's, it's, it's as insidious as human nature, yeah. Except, yeah. except look at a country like India, okay? When you have a police officer and there's a wire hanging above your street, you know, if you own a business and he comes by, sir, this is not regulation. Of course, there's 50 other wires up there already. He goes like this. You give him as much as you can, 500 bucks maybe, equivalent in rupees, whatever it is. And he now protects your wire, okay? Now, what I'm trying to bring to the table is this concept of bakshish. You know, you've, so what it is, is it's like almost like a familiarity with corruption where it's like everybody expects it. It's like a little tip. It's not a lot of money, but it saves you time if you have the little resource mm -hmm. to give you. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do with some of my civil public policy is to say, for going forward internationally, if you can compensate people better who are civil servants and servants of everyone, every type of, every type of person that does anything, mm -hmm. if you compensate them more fairly, you can cultivate the mentality that you've kind of been dealt your back sheesh. So if you see a little old lady in the street and you're a police officer, you should just pretend that she just handed you $250. You're going to do her an extra favor. You're going to go above and beyond because you're being taken care of. You're going to be compensated well. And so all going forward, compensation has to be incentivized. It has to be, I feel like it needs to be subsidized. And so when you subsidize, when you subsidize um, earnings, when you subsidize the breadwinner, I think that's a kind of a cool phrase. That yeah. was one I came up with. Yeah. Uh, so when you subsidize the breadwinner, what happens is Walmart doesn't have to pay more than $8 an hour. They don't have to hire people for more than eight hours a week because for every dollar they earn at Walmart, they get three dollars from the government. It's a little bit like a Ross Perot thing, but a little bit kinder. You know, I learned from that when he interrupted my Covington Cross when I was on the television. So the thing of it is, that should be where if you're earning less than whatever, it's got to have a cola. So we're working on the gradients now when it comes to income. But yeah. what we're advocating for nationally and internationally I've been inspired by Andrew Yang, but I was thinking this way before him, and I feel like he's got some great detail, but it's just not generous enough. And what you want to do is if there's a little old lady holding piano lessons, she can only do many piano lessons a week. She can't do, like, she can't do a thousand of hours piano lessons a week. Right. And she might charge $20 an hour for her piano lessons, which would be entirely fair. However, she's making $10,000 a year. These are, fight, these are figures that people make a year. Believe it or not, this little old lady in her social security, she's living off this 10,000. If you say, for every dollar you make, Mabel, you can get $3 from the government, it's gonna incentivize her to go and change her rates. She might offer it for $10 an hour because she knows she's gonna be earning $40 an hour. That's the key. More people can afford it. The, the consumer, the citizen is getting it at a subsidized rate. The corporations, it's gotta be a love letter corporations, I agree. Big business has to be attended to, has to be first for them. That's what I've been trying to do with everything I've been doing. I've been thinking about, okay, it has to be unobjectionable. It has to be something that no one could object to. It has to be everything. Everyone has to be taken care of by this. It has to be that way. Otherwise it won't be pushed forward. Yeah. It'll just be held up. So that's one of the things it's like, it can happen decades from now, but the ideas have to get out into the public conversation now. A man who I can't always respect, but I do most of the time, Milton Friedman once said, that it's all about the ideas that are in the conversation currently. Mm -hmm. So if an ideal is not in the conversation currently, it's not going to be on the table to be talked about as an option. So more and more, when people have more free time to think, hopefully they'll have more free time to consider some novel combinations of orthodox and unorthodox ideas. It's not all just about being unorthodox. Mm -hmm. It's not all just about being strained and idiosyncratic. Right. It's about finding the best of both unorthodox and orthodox ideas. You do that marvelously. So I'm so delightful that you can have my first guest foot. I thank you for like, kind of like, you know, introducing me to this because, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is like, I've been thinking about doing this for a long time. And it's like to have a guest on, it's not always going to be about interviews, which makes this more special. But I do have some other interviews lined up, excited about. And I want you to like, you know, have your say, like anything you want to talk about, history, culture, science, technology, anything, business, culture, music, music. You talk about music. Not everybody likes the same music. Yeah. You know, the thing I will say about music and YouTube. Mm -hmm is I'm so inspired by music and YouTube because it seems like there's near endless amounts of music on YouTube. And there's people that are DJs that have 
20,000 records that just upload record after record and things no one has ever heard. It was only on vinyl. And it's like, you can listen to something new every day. And the power of YouTube is ultimately that you can, you can just let it play and then it'll choose for you based off of what you've already mm -hmm. listened to and liked. It's marvelous. That kind of thing. That's how ideas spread. So hopefully both of our channels grow and prosper during this time. I mean, like, I'm looking forward to encourage it both ways for sure. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll check out your channel as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be making work on for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a great honor for me to be, um, you know, and, and it's my, my pleasure, my great delight to be able to help you launch this, um, this interview and this, this podcast. So it's, it's really pleasant and, and it's really fun, actually. Um, everything is, everything can happen with fun. And so it's really great that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll forward this video uh, in a little bit to you, but it's, you know, I'm just so... Um, so happy um, that uh, you know we got to connect, and thank you so much for having me on your uh, the inaugural, inaugural of your podcast. How wonderful! Yeah, you are a delight. I mean, I'd have you on again. We, 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 you know what? When you have the time, I will set the time aside for you. It's a joy. It's an honor. It's thank a privilege. You. It's great. Thank you. And you thank inspire you. me so much. I'm looking forward to listening from <laughs> learning from you going forward. And I encourage people to pick up her book. And you know what? I should encourage you to do is I'm about to do. Audio book, I love when an author reads their own book, is glorious if you can put the time in to do it. Everybody's schedule is so busy. I'm gonna find the time to do it. As a woman author, I love to hear a woman author read their book because no one understands the words that they wrote better than they do. I That's love true. any author, but especially women author because I encourage diversity in everything I do. And just also, I was raised by women. I was raised by my grandmother and my mother. Yeah. And most of my social circle is women. I'm more comfortable with women. Generally, women are kinder to me. Case in point, you know, I've set up some fellows for this too, but they weren't as, uh, you know, enthusiastic yet. A right, couple right. of interesting people. Roman Sanikov coming up. He's got Russian literature, cyber intelligence. Seemed like an interesting dude. Figured I'd reach right. out to him. But my Beautiful. goodness, I look forward to what you have on your podcast too, which Thank you have you. on your YouTube channel. It's so much cooler to have video too. It's really Thank nice that you. That you Thanks. Thank you for being magnanimous enough yes. to set up your Zoom for me because, my goodness, I appreciate it more than oh, I can say, course. seriously. Of course. of course, it's my pleasure. And so I'll send it to you and then uh, we'll talk again very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, you have a wonderful week. Have Thank wonderful you. weeks ahead. Thank you so much. You Thank you. Thank day. you. You too, as well. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> what should I do? Should I? What should I do? Should I'll, I, end, should I I'll end the meeting. You can leave this in the recording. I like it.